It's a beautiful morning in the mountains of southern Appalachia. We've had beautiful weather this week. Really cool, crisp mornings. We even had some 40s once or twice, mostly in the 50s. And then the days have not got really hot, and we've had blue skies. It's just been beautiful, beautiful weather. And it looks like today's going to be another beautiful day. A little bit chilly this morning, but it warms up pretty quick. I'm going to start my day with all this mess behind me. I'm going to clean this off. Matt's over at the wood pile. He's trying to get the wood splitter started because, of course, we're, we're going to think about um, those cold days ahead where we'll need to start building fires. We have some wood left from last winter, so we've got some to start out. But we're never those people that can manage to have it all split and stacked and ready. We just, we just can't never seem to get there. Maybe someday we will. But he's over there working on that, and I'm going to tackle the beans. I'm glad to have that chore completed. It looks so much better. Now while I was going through pulling all the dried ones off, I found dried vines. I found a few green beans and a few dried beans that we'd missed when Matt and I went through and gathered them all the last time. So I, as I was pulling them off, I would pull the beans off and put them in the middle of the aisle there, middle of the row. And um, then I went back and picked them up. Not many, just about a handful, but I hated to waste any of them. Several people have mentioned to us that they use like a, a torch or something to burn that off and it's easier than picking it off. I, we've never tried that. Sounds like it, it might be easier uh, to do for sure if you just went down through there and burn them, burnt the places off. I don't know. You may know. Maybe you use one or maybe you know about them. I have seen those um, in different videos that are supposed to be used for weeds on the ground. So I, I suppose it's the same thing. You just use it on the cattle panel to remove the, the dried vines. I left this one little patch of beans here. This is one of the ones that Debbie shared with us from Bryson Farm Supply. Uh, and it was, it said mystery bean. It was from Cherokee from the reservation. Matt and I called it the paint bean because the bean seeds look like a paint horse is what we thought. I'll show you a, a picture of the beans, of the seeds. So when I first, we didn't pick any of them to eat because it took so long. It was a, a bean that really took a long time to grow and to actually start producing all summer. We planted it at the same time, but it kind of reminded me the growth habit of it, of cornfield beans. Oops, I dropped one. I've got to find it. Way too precious not to find, so I found it. But the growth habit of it reminded me of cornfield beans just because it did take so long to grow. So I, as soon as they started filling out, I opened up one and I thought, well, it doesn't look like those that we planted. But then I realized on the side, there was a little mark. And then I realized, well, when it dries, that little mark's gonna turn like a, the paint color. Now this one that I opened has that little mark, but not near as much as the one that I planted. It was even prettier. So what I've been doing is I've just been letting them, letting them hang out here and dry. Some of them, like this one I just picked, and here's another one, are dry enough to actually shell out. Let me look at it. See if it's any different. Some of them are, the shell is still, I mean, the, you can tell they still need to dry some more. So this one looks similar to the one that I just shelled out, about the same. So I'm gonna let these that are, they once they, if I could find one that, you could see in the camera there. Well, I pulled it loose, but you can see once they start kind of drying, the first stage is they turn this beautiful, that's like a red color. I don't know if that's showing up either. I'll take a, a photo of it, but it's a beautiful red color. And then eventually after that, they start to dry. So my thought behind these was I'm just gonna let them all dry. I don't know if we'll end up with enough to actually cook and taste. I hope so. I may just have to do like the, um, just taste a little bit, cook a little spoonful full and eat them and see how they do. But I'm definitely excited about having more of the seed to save. 
So this was one of the ones I was most excited about that Debbie shared with us. So it's really rewarding to see, see what they turned out like. Come up to check our butter beans and see if there's any ripe enough to pick. I believe there is. I don't know about those. There's some big ones down here though. get to be fairly large size. As I was picking the butter beans, I thought, well, I could go ahead and pull up the Holstein peas because I thought they were done growing and we harvested all of them. We've not tried them yet because we got so very few of them. But then right when I was beginning to pull, I noticed, look, there, the pea plant or the what I thought was dead is coming back out. It's got new growth. You can see this one does too. This one's even got a bloom. So I'm just going to leave them alone. I don't know. Maybe there'll be another flush between now and true cold weather and we'll get more peas. I was really surprised though to see that new growth. can see all the new little mulberry weeds coming up in the blackberry bed that we where we pulled it all out and weeded it I knew there would be tons of them sprout back up and you can see there is so I'm using a hoe and trying to get all those up before they get any larger and begin to set seeds this will be a process we have to do over and over and over and even then that little weed is so persistent I'm not sure we'll ever beat it fall things were doing pretty good until they started getting eat insect damage when I finally had time to investigate it was a worm it had worms in them and they were eating probably some kind of I don't know if it was like a worm that turns into a moth or a butterfly or something or or what it was but they were eating eating the leaves so this damage that you see is actually me I cut all them cut them back got rid of all of it I basically had to to find all the little worms and pick them off so I cut it all back this is kale in this one and you can see just now beginning to come out with some new leaves so i think it'll be okay now that i've got rid of the worms i cut it all back and then i doused it good with some diatomaceous earth and i don't see any any worms they were just hiding in, in all that lush foliage and of course enjoying themselves a, a good meal of my kale the worms were also bothering the uh, turnips and the mustard, and I kind of did the same thing to them. Had to cut cut back the foliage and then look look for the worms and get some diatomaceous earth. But the thing they've not bothered is the beets. So I don't have many beets right here, but I have a few, and it looks like I'm at least going to have, you know, five or six beets. Maybe I'll have enough for a supper anyway, since I didn't have any this spring. That would be nice. This is a lovely lettuce plant. You can see how tall it is. That has just happened since we've had this cooler weather move back into the mountains. That's actually a lettuce that I planted early in the spring, planted it in that grow bag and we ate all of it. But somehow one little plant kind of hung on and through the summer when I would notice it, I would see it and it was struggling because it was so hot. It was just little, you know, probably not even over two inches high. And I just left it there, really kind of forgot about it. Once that cool weather come back into the mountains, as I said, I started noticing it was really perking up. And then you can see it's probably a foot tall. I need to harvest that beautiful lettuce and eat it for supper. Maybe I'll do that tonight. And then I'll cut it off, cut that stem off and hoping in the hopes that, and it probably will, it'll just continue to put out new leaves and grow.
I need a sweater for this popsicle. <coughs> Ain't that bad. I had one on, but I've left it laying somewhere. Unusual day today. Me and Matt's went in different directions. While I was doing working in the garden, he was working on the log splitter, trying to get it started. It's a yearly battle. Probably for three years, I've asked, told him he should get a new one. It's just wore out and old and hard to keep running. And I think you were fighting to no avail today, weren't you? Yeah, it's. It split its last log. I'm done with it. So, I'll either buy another one or split it with an axe and go devil. That's what I did all morning. That's was what that. he ended up doing was he finally give up, got so frustrated working on the thing. It's a yearly thing. Usually, not just a yearly, not just getting it started, but on, it's always been like that since we've had it. Just put it that way. Work like a charm for several days and then not work what is it the carburetor or something something in it it's got a multitude of problems oh, wow. and it was a piece of junk from day one as far as that I'm was concerned. its biggest problem <laughs> it's like everything else you buy anymore so it's it's hard to hard to go wrong with the axe other than it's hard on you What was that thing one time you were going to build, but you never did? The swinging thing? Yeah, you should try it's a, that. It's a big coal spring manual log splitter. I just can't never seem to get, get it done. Maybe you can now. You got to buy all this. I mean, do you have the stuff or is something you got to order or look for especially? I was going to try to build it before I left work in the shop down there, but... Now I don't really have here what I need to build it with tool, tool wise. Mm. So, I don't know. I may just go back all the way old time and just go devil and wedges and see if I can stand it. You like it? I mean, you like splitting wood? In a way, if it didn't hurt me so bad. It's a good exercise, but my arms and elbows and forearms are screaming. Might just need to do it for a little while and get back into a little bit better shape. It'll keep you in shape. It will. It's good. What do they say? It heats you three times or something mm -hmm. when you cut it and when you split it and then when you burn it. Mm -hmm. But we didn't. Matt didn't cut that wood. We usually get, we don't really have a place, a good place to cut wood. So we usually get a friend of ours to bring. He's in the, what do you call it, right-of-way business. Yeah. Cutting right-of-ways and things like that, clear-cutting places, mm -hmm. I guess. Tree trimming and cutting trees around houses and all that. And he's usually got a wood pile around his house, and he'll cut it into stove links and then sell it. And so he brings us usually, a, we get him to bring a dump truck load, and then Matt handles it from there. Still warming you twice, I guess. And that's actually, I don't know when we got that load. Back late winter, early, I guess late, late last winter, so it's been laying there a while. And some of it's big, some of it's yeah. two foot around, so pretty hard to split. So I've been sawing it in quarters with a chainsaw and then splitting it. That's what I did this morning. It's been beautiful weather though. Even nice for using an axe with the cooler temperatures. I'm sitting here getting cold with my popsicle today. It's been in mostly in the 50s at night and what 70s during the day. Mm -hmm. It's been really really nice. It was a nice even splitting that wood till the sun got in there on the wood pile. It was right about lunchtime when it finally got in there and it started getting hot so I had to quit. Of course I was tired. Yeah. Split quite a bit though. I split probably a pickup load I guess. Mm -hmm. 
maybe in another month we'll have our first fire. Mm -hmm. Acorns falling. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Hickory nuts, I could hear them falling up in front when I was in the beans. And here are the squirrels cutting them. A lot of people have been asking about Granny. We really appreciate your prayers and all the kind things you've done for her. Really tickles her when she gets a card or something else in the mail. She's doing pretty good. She's awful tired, but hold, hanging in there. Last night, her and Katie and Paul was at Walmart and out to eat till I was already in the bed. So she's doing pretty good last night. I don't know how she managed that. She'll probably be wore out today. But uh, her doctor's appointments are continuing, but they've not decided on an actual plan of treatment yet. But we expect that that'll happen next year, next year, <laughs> next week. Um, they're pin going to do another scan to pinpoint the places that they will try to treat of the cancer. So after that, maybe she'll begin to receive treatment. Of course, we're worried about how she'll handle that, and she is, but she's she's her own boss there's nobody gonna boss granny and she's this is something she wants to move forward with and she has a real positive attitude about it and we're just gonna hope for the best I ended up picking almost two gallon buckets of butter beans, so I think I'm going to take a few of them at least and share with her. And then I found some Mississippi pink eyes to add to them, so that'll be a fine meal. Mm -hmm. She'll be excited about that if we share them with her. They're awful good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and Matt have become such fans of butter beans and peas. I wish we had room to grow even more. Uh, the Holstein pea that we pulled, we thought they were all done. So I was going to pull up the vines of them while I was up there picking the butter beans. And then I noticed they've got new growth, all the vines do, at coming out at the bottom. <laughs> Are they going to have time? I don't know, but I said I was going to leave them just in case. We'll see. So we ended up with them. We didn't plant, I think, five seed, five uh, peas, five seeds of them. So we didn't end up with very much. Probably, what, a good handful, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it's tempting. Do you, we want to taste them. I think I might, even if I do it in the Instapot, like just cook a handful and let's taste them. I guess I could put some in with the butter beans, though. Yeah. Maybe put some in there. And, and taste them that way. We really want to know what they taste like. The others have been so good. <clears throat> I'm excited too. Our dried, the ones, the rattlesnake beans that we left drying on the vine turned out to be quite a bit. I mean, at mm -hmm. least three or four pounds we've ended up with. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to have those and, and try them. We've had them drying uh, in the house and then we've still got some outside <coughs> drying so we'll have to shell those out once they get dry. But that'll be really a unique thing for me and Matt. First time ever we had dried beans this winter that we actually grew instead of mm -hmm. just buying them. You see where the critter been digging in your stuff? Yeah, Matt told me this morning said something's been in your grow bags or out there digging and I said, oh no. It didn't look like it tore up anything too bad. Um, but it was, I know probably because we fertilized everything with fish emulsion. And I bet that's, that's, what, they that's what they got in. That's what they got in, yeah, that's what they were. I think it's an armadillo. Really? I can tell by, in that bed right there, you can see yeah. where they stuck a little nose down in it and 
whatever they're after, some kind of insects, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's, it looks just like what it does down at Holy Deer, down at Deer Camp. I've actually watched them in the yard and then go out there and look at the sign they leave, and it's exactly the same. Well, that's probably it. And they are a few of them here. Yeah, I was going to say, I've been hearing more and more often you hear people saying they seen them, one run over in the yard, I mean, in the road, or seen one in their yard, like go through the yard. So, I guess they've infiltrated this country. Yeah. Well, I've never seen one, though walking around or anything. I hadn't even seen one in the road, but I've heard people say they have seen where they've run over. I've seen them down there in the yard at deer camp, and I've seen them, I've actually had them come under me and me in a tree hunting. Yeah. You know, so I've seen them several yeah. times. Hmm. I guess it's, the cold don't bother them this far north. I mean, it ain't, it's, it's not cold here like it is up north, but Normally, you think of them as a more southern animal, but they are here. I've seen them, and I've seen them run over in the road a lot. Yeah, they've finally migrated here, and they've been here a while, several years. Yeah, just another vermin to have to put up with. Uh, what was some of our words from the other day? Verminous. Yeah, verminous, verminous, verminous. Matt's been watching, which he always has, but lately, I guess yesterday or day before, I was sitting there while he was watching uh, Gunsmoke. It's amazing how many words uh, Festus uses that come out of the dictionary. Yeah, but I guess it. in the uh, show, he was supposed to be from Kentucky or somewhere, wasn't he? I think. He's yeah. always telling Doc about back home. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember where he's from, but it's somewhere like that. Yeah. Of course, um, a lot of times on our Apple, our language videos, that's one of the things I love to talk about most. A lot of people will say, well, you know, that's not just Appalachian. I've lived in Idaho, New Mexico, wherever. And, and we say all that too. And, and of course, um, Appalachia doesn't like hold a, a, what do you call it, put it in a safe or something. We're the only people that can say hold those things. On it. Yeah, hold a patent on it. Most all of those old wet words and terms and things, those usages come with people, the first immigrants, you know, settlers that come and and then they, as they went on west, they took them with them. And I think they hold on in places where like a large population kind of stayed. And definitely the mountains of Appalachia are known for that. People like my family's been here for 10 generations. Matt's probably has been too. So anywhere like that where they, people, ended up settling and staying for continuous generations, especially a large population of them, or even a significant population, I guess. Those old words and phrases hung on. But I have noticed that Festus uses a lot of them. Yeah, he does, and he'll yeah. use them in a string. Yeah, yeah. We really like gun smoke. Yeah, that's one of my very favorite shows. Yeah. What was the one? What was the one before Festus? What was his name? Uh, oh, good grief! I'm hearing his name, hear him talk, and see his yeah. face. Uh, Chester. Chester. Yeah, yeah, I like Chester too, though. I like both of them. That kind of dealing sidekicks there. I like Chester or Festus because he's always trying to con Doc into buying him a drink. Yeah. Because he ain't never got any money. He's always trying to. Him and Doc's always going at it, which Chester yeah. and Doc were too. That's a good show. Mm -hmm. I looked up one of them characters on that one, on one I was watching last night. I always. I see somebody on there that um, somebody on there that was young at the time. I'd always want to look and see if they're still alive. Most of them aren't. But when I watched last night, I looked him up, and he was. He's still mm -hmm. living. He's I forget how old he is. He's old. He's 95, maybe. Wow. I think. Yeah. So very few of them are still alive. Yeah. Some of the younger ones that were on there still are. 
does always make you wonder those people that you watch like that what happened to them now some of them went on to be movie mm -hmm. stars and other things you know but mm -hmm. uh, the ones that didn't makes you wonder what happened to them if they just went back to living a I guess a normal life maybe maybe that was normal to them too though but mm -hmm. what happened to them some of them would leave I guess being an actor and then just go into some kind of business or go become you know mm -hmm. stuff whatever I always want to look and see what else they were in and mm -hmm. see if I can remember if, if I watched one that they was something else they were in if I can remember that a lot of times I can. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Jim Cassida and I, we've just been so appreciative and so pleased with how well our cookbook has done. And, and we just both are just thrilled with the, the uh, how people have reacted to it from people that, you know, are just like that's the way I eat and I'm so glad that now it's all here in one book or people maybe that said that's the way my grandparents ate now I'm happy I've got these recipes and people that have never been here you know never been to this part of the part of the world anyway we've been really really well pleased and really are thankful and humbled for all the uh, good reports that we've got about it and the way that it's it's done good selling but we're in the beginning stages of talking about a second book and so the second book would be more there probably likely be some recipes in it but be more thinking about the um, being close to the land the nature of the Appalachian people being close living close to the land making a garden like me and Matt do um, harvesting you know killing your meat from the land like Matt does as far as the deer go and uh, all those kinds of things just that intimate relationship with the with the land and so we're just in very very beginning stages of just talking about it but I had seen recently in a in a magazine and I was flipping through and um, didn't really read about it but I noticed it and then Jim had noticed it somewhere else a new term that has come about and he he'd seen it online so he just sent me the link to it to show me said this is something we should you know thinking about about the book uh, of course we wouldn't call it what they did but I, I hadn't told Matt this so I have to we'll have to see how what he thinks about it so what do you think about the term forest bathing what does it make you think about forest bathing just taking in the forest yeah yeah when I first seen the actual the one I was looking at it was a different magazine so it must be something that's hip and cool <laughs> now uh, when I first seen it I thought oh what are they going out in the woods and taking a bath it's like bathing in the sunshine yeah but Same, I thought kind of I thought actual bath like they were carrying water out and taking a bath in the in the forest anyway but um, after Jim sent me the one he sent and I read it, I got to thinking about it and thought, you know, it's like this, um, both those magazines were kind of talking about it like it was a new novel ideal that, you know, you go out into the forest and like Matt said, you're bathing in all the, uh, like right now, the leaves falling and then the, we can hear some crickets and the breeze, uh, which is a little chilly on me, probably not on Matt. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you're just taking all that in, being quiet and really looking around you and noticing the leaves and the trees and everything. But it got me to thinking about how me and Matt have always had great appreciation for that. Even when I was a little girl, I did, and I think Matt did too as a little mm -hmm. boy. Just something so very and peaceful but comforting somehow. Uh, now, I wouldn't be comforted if I was just dropped down in the middle of nowhere and I had no clue where I was at. I wouldn't like to be lost. I'm not saying that. But spending time in the great outdoors, uh, but especially the woods to me and I think to Matt too, it just brings you such a peace, such a comfort. Uh, as believers, of course, it makes us feel close to our Creator. I have a video I'll try to link to it, that, uh, or I will link to it, about finding solace. That's like any time that I'm upset or worried or troubled about something, that's what I want to do. I want to go up somewhere. Usually, uh, I want to go up instead of up the creek. I want to go up straight up the ridge and sit up there in the on top where you can kind of see everything and you, I don't know, you feel far removed from the world and all its troubles, whatever's bothering you. But I thought that was really interesting that they called it forest bathing. It's mm -hmm. like a, a new thing. Like I said, must be pretty hip and cool right now to show up in two different magazines here in the same time period. Mm -hmm. 
And of course they were telling, they were advertising that you could go, I don't remember now where it was even at, but it was like companies, you know, an organization that if you went and made an appointment with them, then they would take a group out and do the forest bathing <laughs> together, go together. I find it helps to be solitary in that regard. Yeah, yeah. But of course, everybody's not like us. They can't just head out their back door and, and be in, in the woods. So it makes sense for people that maybe live in a more urban area and then they would hire somebody like this to take them into the woods. And, you know, seems um, kind of silly to me and Matt, but since we've grown up that way, we should be, you know, you're thinking about people that have never been in the woods before. It makes sense that you'd want someone to go with you and then someone to, you know, maybe you're afraid of wild animals or snakes or whatever it is. So it makes sense, I guess, that you'd want someone to go with you and kind of show you um, the way and show you what to expect and, and even point out things for you to notice. I guess if you were a, an adult, a grown person had never seen it and then went and was able to go in and see it and experience it, it'd be a shock. It would be, yeah. It'd be a, <laughs> maybe it might be overwhelming. Yeah, it might be. I mean, I've, it's, I mean, I've always been in it, even when I was a small child, always. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, I, mean, I guess I just take for granted that's just the way it's always been. But if I'd never seen it till today and then got put up just even, you know, somewhere close mm -hmm. to here, just up in the woods, it would be quite a shock. Especially in our our neck of the woods. Uh, of course, there's all different types of woods and forest all across the world, but ours are, I guess, kind of overwhelming because they're so thick in Southern Appalachia mm -hmm. with so much undergrowth of the laurels and the ivy. Uh, reminds me of one time years and years ago, I read about, and I don't even remember now what kind of book it was or whatever, but it was saying the difference, like people like maybe me and Matt who grew up here, that feels comforting to us. Like we we feel like it's a, uh, to be, you know, surrounded by mountain ridges that are covered in all the trees and the ivy and the laurel and all kinds of other stuff. It feels very comforting. Uh, but for someone who maybe grew up on the plains, in the plains or the prairies, and you put them in a place like that, they kind of feel like they're suffocating. Mm -hmm. um, and then the opposite, of course, if you put me and Matt in those places, we might feel like, oh my goodness, there's no cover. Where am I gonna, where am I gonna hide? I'm not mm -hmm. protected. What if something swoops down and gets me? Mm -hmm. You know, just the difference in the nature of people where they, where they were born and raised and what they were familiar with. But yeah, if you'd never been uh, in woods like this and then you were set down especially if you sat down in a laurel hell or something mm -hmm. you'd be you'd want to <clears throat> be wondering can I get out of here what's going on it was a patch of woods below my house where I grew up and it wasn't real real rural but it was semi that way and one of my buddies lived on the other side of that patch of woods and, and it wasn't a big patch of woods it's probably 15, 20 acres, and I'd be over to his house till it got way after dark, and then I'd have to walk home, and I'd have to go through those woods to the house with no light. Mm -hmm. And I did that my whole childhood growing up, and never thought nothing never thought about anything it. about it. Uh, I know, there was a trail through there, of course, but even if there hadn't been, I could still do it. I mean, that's just because I was just born in a place where I could do that, and wow. I just always did it. Uh, my cousin lived up the road from me, and I'd, we, of course, always back and forth to, between those two, our house and their house, in the black dark, sometimes 10, 11 o'clock at night, and we never had a flashlight. Yeah. We just went. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of people. So I don't have any fear of the dark, in other words. A lot of people do, but I don't, never have had. I guess from early on I learned that ain't nothing there gonna hurt you. I always looked at it like there's, for the most part, there's nothing there in the day, at night time that's, or daytime it's not there in the night, and not there in the night, and it's not there in the day. So I was gonna say that's some Papa yeah. Wade wisdom there. Yeah. He said, why, there's nothing in the dark that ain't there in the day. Right. That's the way I look at it. Forest bathing. You'll have to tell us if you've heard about that. It's the first time I've heard it. 
Well, I, like I said, when I first seen it in the magazine I was looking at, I thought, they've taken a bath in the woods? What? You have to carry your water out? You know, I, I knew, I thought it was like a spa-like thing, you know, which in a way it is, because they were talking about being peaceful, you know, and calming. It's a calming thing. But then when, uh, I, then I realized, no, they're just sitting in a circle talking about the woods and examining, you know, the leaves and the, whatever they seen, maybe a mushroom or something, maybe if a bird flew by. Um, but then when Jim sent me the one that he had found, I thought, oh, well, this must be a must be a cool thing for today. And it immediately made me think of all the, uh, and I'm sure in other places too, but of course I can only speak to people of Appalachia it's the only place I've ever lived. But all the wonderful stories I've heard of people uh, that would go up on those high ridges to, like I said, find a minute's peace, to pray, to be close to their Lord, you know. Um, traditionally, people in the mountains of Appalachia have, they built their homes, their houses in the coves and the hollers, we would say. Some areas of Appalachia say coves. But down in those lands, of course, if they had river uh, bottom land, that was even better. But that mostly was took up by maybe more well-to-do folks. But anyway, that was traditionally where they where they built their homes and uh, then they left those high ridges for you know cemeteries and graveyards and then also uh, I'm sure some maybe illicit things going on with the moonshine and thinking about moonshine stills and but also they climbed those ridges that as Matt would say steep as a mule's face face steep as a mule's face which if you think about it the nose of a mule you know uh, to find that peace find them a minute's peace again mm -hmm. just so they could go back and continue of course there was other reasons like I mentioned the moonshine not everybody made moonshine though but uh, cockleberries and things like that grow better at that at, like the higher up areas even around our house there's like up there on that ridge there's huckleberries there's a big huckleberry yeah. patch up there so there was other reasons to go and usually those things was maybe a, a whole group would go and then end up having a picnic and picking berries you know but i Every just time you go in that huckleberry patch there's always bear sign in it always yeah where they've been eating i've not we stumbled through it there a couple two or three years ago hiking but prior to that it'd been years since i'd been in there but i remember as always uh, you'd see where a bear had been or where he'd scratched a tree or skin a mm -hmm. tree up marking it or whatever yeah So it's maybe it's one of those things, what's old is new again, with the people used to find, which me and Matt still do I that. I have an opinion on that, but I'll, I'll keep it to myself. <laughs> and other people still do that too, seek seek peace and comfort uh, out in the woods, up on the high ridges, and uh, but maybe it's kinda, becoming a thing again. I kind of chuckle when I hear somebody coin a phrase to something that we've always done like it's something brand new. Yeah. I find I just, uh, to me that's, it just makes me chuckle a little, yeah. <laughs> you know. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. It's not, it's not all that new. Yeah, yeah. And that was definitely the point Jim was making. He wasn't yeah. saying we should add forest bathing <laughs> to our, yeah. but to talk about it from our point of view because mm -hmm. of course he would feel similar to what me and Matt have shared that we felt. And, and he certainly, I know him uh, well, uh, certainly in the same ways hunted for peace in those uh, places. One time when the girls were real little, they were little, I mean they were walking but they were I don't know, maybe three, something like that. Little enough that I didn't around the house. They didn't, this day it was in the summer, they didn't have a shirt on. And I just suddenly, all of a sudden decided I needed to go up there to that high ridge. And of course I had to take them with me if I went. And even for me, there's a place that gets pretty steep. You pretty much have to just, you're just like climbing. And it's a, it's because of the leaves, it's almost like a slide. If you remember being on the slide when you were little and trying to climb up it backwards, which of course you were never supposed to do that, but kids did it anyway. Anyway, but they, uh, they were always up for an adventure. So they, they stayed right with me and we went and we sat and they played around while I just sat there and felt the wind in my face and looked at the mountains and you know, got, gained my whatever I needed to come back and start again. 
But when we got home, their little bellies were just like scratched. They wasn't crying or anything, but they had scratch marks all over them. I was like, oh, you poor little babies. Your mama drug you up the side of the mountain and <coughs> didn't even put a shirt on you. That's a good fall. Yeah. Oh yeah, they didn't complain. They thought it was a grand adventure. We've mm -hmm. got to go in the in the big woods with Mama and couldn't wait to tell Matt when he got home from work. And I drug them all over the side of the ridge. Well, I think I'm gonna take some of those butter beans down the hill to Granny. And I don't know if Matt's got his chainsaw out here. I think he's got one more tree he's gonna cut out of the trail. Yeah, I'm gonna try to. And cut the tree. and. Maybe go in and think about what we're going to eat for supper. What is it? I don't know. I thought you was going to fix me something. I can. Yeah, we'll have to have to think on that. We're always grateful when you stop by to visit with us. Please leave us a comment and tell us if you are familiar with the term um, forest bathing or if you're like us and it's just something you always did but you didn't know there was a new term for it. <laughs> Um, and as always, we really appreciate you stopping by to help us celebrate Appalachia. We've got ants all over us. Yeah. Why are they on this thing? I don't know, they might be dropping out of that tree or something. They might be dropping some ant heels on the ground here or something. The beans got my arms. Oh, scratchy. Mm -hmm. I got poked and splintered and some harm on these fingers. Big old splinter went in it. And it went in and hooked and curled and I had to pull it back out. And it hurt. Terrible kind. Yeah. I've still got I thought I got out the whatever was in my finger from last week. And it felt better for a day or two and now it's festered back up and see so you can see that black, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it all, did I? You must not have. It's just work its way up. Put some drawing side on it. Yeah. Me too. I need to go wash my hands as dirty as they are. It's sore. It's sore. It was bad. It was terrible sore, and then I put some pine rods on it. Got got that piece out and then it was better for a day or two now it's sore again but it's whatever that is has worked its way back up i didn't get it all it was a sliver what i did get but it ain't, you know, i thought it was a briar but it's more of like you said a splinter See, that's cold that wind is yeah. nice it is nice but you're seeing some yellows up there now mm -hmm. Comes some more wind. Is it supposed to rain? No. We need some rain. Yeah, it's dry. Is there another hurricane? Somebody said something, sent me a message. So I didn't bear, I just seen the top part of it said something about I hope the hurricane. I didn't know either. Now you're gonna go out there or you talked yourself out of it? Uh, I got the saw up to here. I'll go out there and see if I can. What I wanna do is now that that thing's failed, it's a, it's a maple about that big round. I'd like to cut it into some sections and make me a backstop where I can shoot my guns like I used to have out there years ago. Yeah. Something catch bullet. That'd be nice. I need to I don't know if I'll get all that down today, but I'd like to get it got cleared it up and sawed up and ready to build make one of them because I need, I've got some guns I need to shoot. Yep. I don't know. I've not really, sh I've not shot from the porch out to there since we built this. I don't, I don't even know if I can see through there or not. It may be in the way. I'm going to have to go down to Steve's and use his setup. Well, I I can do it from here on. I'm just trying to get back a little further, but I'll just do whatever I can do. 
I've got one rifle I need to shoot in, the other one I just need to check. The beans look better. I mean, that does. Looks better down there. Yeah. And those rattlesnake beans, just now we're getting those bugs on them. I mean, there's still not many on them, but I mean, so I don't know if that was a fluke or if they, if they're that much more bug resistant, that's one more reason to plant them. We'll just plant them again next year and see. Maybe, I'm afraid. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you going that way and I'm going this way? I guess. All right. I'm not gonna let you see how, how dangerous this is gonna be.